How are you doing? I'm coming to you live from St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Actually, I'm in front of a picture of the famous statue of Moses by Michelangelo from St. Peter's. Now, I got to go to St. Peter's with Nancy uh, and had a chance to see this statue uh, close up. It was very fascinating. Uh, I'd never been to Rome before. And Nancy grew up uh, uh, her childhood in uh, Europe. And so she spent a few years in Rome. She lived there when she was a little girl. But anyway, we saw close up this fascinating statue of Moses. Now, I'd seen that statue my whole life. And the thing that always kind of weirded me out is why does he have horns? That really looks bizarre. I mean, is he like uh, a devil or something or, you know, um, cartoon character with horns? Well, first of all, the way that we got the devil having horns wasn't from the Bible. It was from Dante in his book, Dante's Inferno. He has the devil having horns. And then, of course, folks used horns for devils after that, up to and including cartoons and Halloween costumes. But Moses has horns. What the heck? Well, here's the story. And Psalm 75 uh, gives us a clue. To the arrogant, I say, boast no more. And to the wicked, do not lift up your horns. Do not lift your horns against heaven. Do not speak with outstretched neck. It's like, yeah, I'm the best. I'm the greatest. That's what the scripture is saying. Don't be arrogant before the Lord. Be humble. What do I mean by that? Well, because this word for horn is karen in the Hebrew. And that word is translated horn. But here comes the mystery. You see, the Hebrew language, today it has about 33,000 words. Biblical Hebrew, the Hebrew is the language of the Old Testament, uh, the Hebrew scriptures. It was written in Hebrew, most of it, uh, most of the Old Testament. I mean, the, some of the later books were have some Aramaic in them. But uh, the Hebrew language of the Bible days, 7,000 words. So there are words uh, there's not a lot of words to go around with. I mean, in the English language, uh, you know, you got a million or at least a couple hundred thousand that we use for, for conversation and so forth. So what do you do in the Hebrew? Well, you have words that are the same exact word for, that have different meanings depending on the context. Now, the most famous one in the Hebrew would be ruach. Ruach means spirit. It also means wind. And it also means breath. And then a really fascinating biblical thing is that in the Greek language of the New Testament, the word panuma means spirit, wind, and breath. And I can't figure that one out. I think that's the miracle of scripture, right? But anyway, in the Hebrew language, um, you got you to gotta use the same word for different things. And that's what they do. Because the word keren means horns, but it also means Shining rays of light. So that's the clue. Because in the story of Moses, when he comes down from Mount Sinai, his whole face is shining gloriously. And there's rays of light shooting out from his face. And in order to protect the Hebrews from getting zapped, uh, Moses actually wore a veil when he would come down after speaking with God. So this idea of shining glory, that's kind of like a metaphor for being cocky and arrogant also. And so sure enough, in Psalm 75, what God is really saying there is quit being so arrogant. And it's translated horns in the English. So that's really bizarre. Because you could have translated that word, shining beams of light, quit being so, tried to be so glorious. That would have been helpful. And in the Bible, that word horns for Moses, that, that's what we got. Here's what I mean. St. Jerome translated the Bible 
into Latin in the fourth century. And he used the Hebrew word for horns, Aaron, when Moses came down. And so in the Vulgate, that's the name of the Bible, the uh, Latin translation Bible. In the Vulgate, it says that Moses came down and his face had horns. And sure enough, that is the mystery solved. And so Michelangelo, whose Bible was the Vulgate, the, the Latin Bible, he saw in the story of Moses that Moses comes down from Mount Sinai with horns rather than shining brightly. Now, I would be terrified if Moses started zapping me with those, uh, you know, with those rays of light. But I'd also be terrified if he was like, hey, ah, ah, and came at me with his horns, either way. But that's the solution. So, thank you, Lord, for making the Bible fascinating enough that, man, I'm going to be studying that thing for the rest of my life and beyond in eternity. Or at least, I guess we'll be talking together. But anyway, in the meantime, thanks. <laughs>